Hey everyone, and welcome to my new tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to create this. Before we go, I want to mention that you can access the project files of this tutorial and every other on my Patreon page. This type of tutorial fits under the second tier membership. And without further ado, let's go. Here I am inside of Adobe After Effects. First of all, we're gonna create a new composition. We're gonna name this Smooth Text Animation. We're gonna leave it on 1920 by 1080, 30 FPS, and we will leave duration on 10 seconds. Hit OK. And the first thing we're gonna do is right click New and solid or you can press ctrl y on your keyboard to create a new solid we will name this background we will leave this as is and we're gonna choose color i will pick this color which is some light gray okay okay and here we have our solid now we can lock this layer because we don't want to click on it and we don't want to do anything with it so we can even make it shy by clicking here and then clicking this button so it disappears from our comp. Now we will pick the text tool and type in our text. I will select the selection tool and make sure to align this to the center. If you don't see this align window, you can enable it here under the window and align. Font I'm gonna be going with is uh, Russell one. We can make this a bit bigger, let's say 120. Ah, that looks good. Make sure this is centered again if it moved. Also, we will leave this on uh, black color. It's looking good. We can see if it has italic, but it doesn't. So we can click here on Fox Italic. Uh, it's looking better this way. And we can enable all caps, even though we typed everything in caps, but sure, why not? The next thing we're gonna do is create a mask. I will click on my text. Make sure to select the rectangle tool. Let's say around this area. Well, maybe we can move it down a little bit with my arrow keys. And I'll make sure to select my selection tool, click on mask, and double click it. I'll make sure this mask is a bit longer because if you change text and you have, let's say, three or four words, you don't want it not disappearing like so. So we will make it like this big, hit enter. Now I can lock the mask because I don't want to click on it. I don't want to move it anymore. It's looking perfect. We can actually minimize this. Now we can start animating our text. I will zoom in a little bit like so. Make sure to put this on full. Click on animate and position. I will expand this and expand advanced. Now, first thing I'm going to do is pick based on words instead of characters and i can actually minimize this i don't need this anymore i will put position above my mask like so it doesn't have to be exact we can leave it around minus 108 that's looking good now we can start animating you see if we move the start it's gonna go down like so based on words i'm gonna click on the stopwatch here to create the first keyframe and then I'm going to move to about, let's say, 2 seconds. And I'm going to put this on a 100. Now we get a simple animation like this. Now it's looking kind of whack, so we will select both of these keyframes. F9 on our keyboard to easy ease them. While they're selected, go to the graph editor here. Zoom in a little bit while holding down Alt and scrolling up. Now make sure your graph looks like this. And make sure that edit speed graph is selected. Now we will make this a bit snappy. So I will select this handle and while holding down shift, I will move it all the way to the left and select this one and move it all the way to the right. You can see influence is 100%. Now, instead of the animation that we had, we have this. And we're practically done with this. We can click this layer and hit U on our keyboard twice to minimize everything. Or we can hit U to open just these keyframes that we've created. Next thing I'm gonna do is 
click here to open up the proportional grid so I can help myself a little bit. We can see that this is the center line. Now, while this layer being selected, I'm gonna hold down shift and click P on my keyboard to open the overall position property. Now let's move around 20 frames before the end of this animation. So while holding down control shift and pressing the left arrow, I'm gonna hit twice to move 20 frames back. And that's where I'm gonna create my first keyframe for this. And let's say we're gonna make this 40 frames long. So while holding down control and shift and pressing the right arrow four times, we're gonna move to about 40 frames ahead. And this is where I'm gonna zoom in on the comp and I'm gonna move the Y position, let's say around here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing like we did with the previous keyframes. We're gonna select them, F9 on our keyboard to easy ease them, go to the graph editor, make sure the Edit speed graph is selected. We're gonna select this keyframe and put the influence on 100% and this one as well. Now we can preview our animation. Now I'm gonna select the text tool again, click here, and I'm gonna type, I'm gonna select all of it, make it around 30 pixels and the color I'm gonna go with is going to be this blue one. I'm gonna center this to the comp and now we can see where to position our text. We're gonna move this up a bit. I think this looks good. Now the next thing we're gonna do is create a mask for this text as well. So we will zoom in a little bit more and we're gonna select our rectangle tool, make sure that this layer is selected, like so, and then we can create a mask around here. Also, we're gonna zoom out a little bit, select our selection tool, double click on the mask, and expand it, like so. You can even make this bigger if you want, if you're gonna have more text here, or just to be sure that the animation fits, and we're gonna press enter on our keyboard, and make sure to lock this mask. You can minimize this. And the next thing we're gonna do is see where the starting animation will be. So we can position our time indicator on this last keyframe of the first animation, and we can hit opening square bracket on our keyboard to position our layer on the time indicator. This is the beginning of this layer. And now we can animate it the same way we did with the first one. I will click on animate, Take position, open the range selector, advanced, based on words, close the advanced, and now we can position this text below our mask. If you zoom in, you can see where the mask is. So we will place it at around 34. That looks good. We will click on the stopwatch or the start, and then we're gonna move two seconds ahead as well and put start on 100%. Now we can fit this up to 100. We can close the proportional grid just to see what we're working with. We can actually click on toggle mask and shape path visibility to make this disappear from our screen. And now we can select both of these keyframes, F9 to easy ease them, open the graph editor and do the same thing. Make sure that the edit speed graph is selected select this keyframe, put the influence on 100%, and the same for the left one. Close graph editor, we can hit Control A on our keyboard to select all the layers, and then we can hit U on our keyboard to make them only show the keyframes that we have, and now we can play this to see what we have. This is looking good, but uh, in my opinion, we want to make this layer start a bit earlier because we can see it's starting at around here. I want to make it pop off as soon as this one drops. Mm, it's still coming late, so I will make sure that this is a bit shorter, the second animation. Instead of 60 frames, we're gonna make it 10 frames less around 50 frames. So the animation will come around here. Let's play this again. Now the next thing we're gonna do is right click new and create a new null object. 
So we will rename this and call it text control. What we can do is take this pick whip and parent both of these layers to this null. If you don't see parent and link, you can right click here, columns, and make sure this is checked. So I'll take the pick whip and parent it to this null with both of these text layers. So if I open up our grid, we can make sure that it looks centered. So I will select this null and now I will move the null up. And now you can see both of these texts are moving with the null. I'll place it around this area. If you zoom in, you can see that it looks kind of proportional now. I will fit this up to 100, maybe disable the grid. So our zoom out animation is gonna start somewhere when the first text drops. So let's move back and see where is that happening. You can see that this text is kind of dropping down. So you can see this is our last keyframe. So we can move, let's say, around 10 frames back and we can select the text control or the null object that we've created. Press S on our keyboard to open the scale property. Make sure to click on the stopwatch to create a first keyframe. And then we're gonna move to about, let's say, this animation is gonna be four seconds long and we're gonna type 85%. Now we have the linear zoom out. So we will select both of these keyframes, F9 on our keyboard to easy use them, open the graph editor, make sure the edit speed graph is selected and make it snappy like we did earlier. So we're gonna leave the influence on a hundred and on the right key keyframe as well. Make sure you're holding down shift while moving this. Close the graph. Now we can position our time indicator at four seconds. Press N on our keyboard to put the end of the work area on the fourth second. Now we can select all these layers, hit U on our keyboard to minimize all the, le all the effects and controls that we've seen. I'll make sure to unhide the background layer that we have, unlock it, select all of this, Make sure your time indicator is positioned on fourth second and hit Alt closing square bracket on our keyboard to make the duration of all of these layers four seconds. I will hit Control Shift C on my keyboard to pre-compose them. I'll name this composition text. And the next thing I'm gonna do is Control D to duplicate this layer. I will rename it to text reverse. Now you can right click this and go to time and time reverse layer. So we can reverse the animation that we had. I will zoom out this a little bit. I'll make sure my work area is a bit longer. Let's say around eight seconds. Now I will move this reverse text to position where the first text is ending. That way we get the reverse animation for the animation that we created. Now if we play this, we're gonna get the full animation. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.